acceptance stuff is really is funny to me, man. I'm gonna make it everybody else's problem because I hate myself. <laughs> All right, guys. Stop assuming that I don't work out. Hey, so I'm a casting director, and I'd like to put you in a show where everyone is shocked about you being able to be in a relationship because you know you're really ugly and everything like that. And everyone's just like, "How does she end up with this person who is like not that?" And like, you ha you get to defend your relationship and be like, "What? You know, people who look like me are also allowed to be in, be loved, and stuff like that." And, 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 and then like. You can, you can talk about how even though you're fat and disgusting and, and gross, that you're still able to be in a relationship. It's totally, totally uh, respectfully done. I'd also like to be able to do an article on Fly You to the UK, and you can be able to talk about how you're secretly a binge eater and you hate yourself, and that you just are really, really sad about being disgustingly, hideously fat and monstrous. Yeah, these people are creating a lot of situations in their own head, aren't they? <laughs> I told you, you're a fat without coming out in oh, so many ways. One time I was at an outdoor craft fair slash art market and I walked over to a tent that had some cute clothes and I just walked around looking at stuff innocuously and this woman came over and she was like, Hi, welcome. Um, I just want you to know we carry all sizes. I let So she was being nice to you and trying to help you? Immediately. <laughs> Then there was the time that um, this guy was trying to sell me uh, fat freezing technology. And so he didn't say what he was trying to sell me at first. And he was just showing me photos of himself before and after and then offered me this service um, unprompted. And then the most innocuous and yet insidious one is that when I will be talking to like actual friends of mine and we'll be describing somebody else in the middle of a conversation they'll be like oh you know and she's like kind of a bigger girl and then they kind of look at me funny or they'll even apologize and it's like you don't have to apologize for describing someone unless you mean that in a derogatory way yeah I don't know get over your feelings so I did a boudoir shoes not something I would have ever seen myself doing but my best friend wanted to do one for therapeutic body image reasons um, and she's the type that likes a buddy for most things and I'm the type that likes an adventure so when she said she was going to do it I asked if she wanted a buddy she said yes and so we did it and it was actually surprisingly fun I really enjoyed it but I managed to get through the entire process without realizing that it would result in photos of myself that I would have to look at and I forbid you have to take a photo of yourself huh? that is proving more difficult. It just shows you that your fat acceptance isn't really acceptance. You know, you hate yourself. Like, I don't know. I don't get it. And I celebrate all bodies, and that's not hard to do because you all are beautiful. When it comes to me, it's a different ballgame. And so I'm trying to decide if I want to share the pictures or not. Would it be self indulgent? Would it be too vulnerable? But would it be affirming for people that have the same body I do? Maybe? I think I'm gonna do it. Hello there! That was sad, you know? You, you, th that is just showing the hypocrisy or the um, delusion of this fat acceptance culture. Like, it's so clear that you hate yourself and you're trying your best to love yourself, but you don't. Like, so put in the work to, to make yourself better. Hey everybody, welcome back to my next part of my new series where I am trying to teach you about things that are fat phobic that you may not have known are fat phobic. So the next thing on the list has to do with thin people. I know, the horror. A fat person talking about thin people, but anyway. So this has to do with when a thin person and a fat person do the exact same thing, but then they're treated differently. That in and of itself is fat phobic. But then the thing that I want Life's not fair. to talk about is the justification that comes along with it. For example, a thin person eats shit and records themselves doing it. Now, the justification behind it as, well, she probably works out, and the fat person obviously doesn't. That right? Yeah, you're um, not understanding metabolism, are you? There is fat phobia. Assuming that a thin person works out, and then assuming that a fat person doesn't, is fat phobic. So stop this. There's so much wrong with that. I mean, you can't exercise away a bad diet, um, no matter what. But uh, if your metabolism allows you to eat as much as you want, 
then first of all, life's not fair. That's just how it works. But also, that person's probably not that healthy. Um, you show that unhealth more than they do. So. Assuming you know what people do with their bodies. Stay tuned for the next part. What I eat in a day as a... I don't think I'll stay tuned for that. ...fat vegan that doesn't diet or want to lose weight. Oat milk is a trap. Fat bodies can exist without the pressure to be smaller, love, and appreciate yourself. Yeah, I, I doubt it. Strawberry oat milk. GF waffles. That is got to be like a thousand calories right there. Waffles with peanut butter and bananas. Oh my god. Yeah, that's enough peanut butter. What's 180 uh, calories per two tablespoons? That's probably like four tablespoons. You got a banana. Then you got like 3,400 calories of waffles. So five, six, seven, eight, 800 calories. I mean, you're looking at half of your calories for the day just for breakfast. That's horrible. With peanut butter. It's so bad, they always go out to eat. Eat whatever you want, but just stop going out to eat, like, all the time. Go to a real restaurant every once in a while and enjoy it. Don't go to fast food and get your stuff all the time like that. It's terrible. Love you, bye. Bones and CBD to that massage. That'd be great. And then I just have one other question. I'm kind of a larger person, and I was curious. I always like to ask spas ahead of time. Like, a lot of times the one size fits all robes just don't work for me. Do you happen to know? I mean, this is. I'm glad that she's warning him ahead of time, but uh, if the robes don't fit you, it should be a decent sign to do something about your weight. Like, what size your robes are? Awesome, thank you. Hey, 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 stop it, stop it. That is not a feeling or emotion. Find better words to describe your insecurities. Yeah, no, 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 no. and hot again today. And I'm just here to make it everybody's problem. A daily reminder that yeah, this whole acceptance stuff is really is funny to me, man. I'm gonna make it everybody else's problem because I hate myself. <laughs> the baddest bitch on the block. Not on my block, though, but on your block, for sure. Ugh. We're gonna normalize some tummies today. Don't normalize, minimize. So my stomach looks like this. My stomach also looks like this, you know? It looks the same, with or without. <laughs> If your stomach flops out like that, shouldn't that be a sign to try to do something, like better yourself? Like, go for a walk. It, it doesn't take much to just be at an average weight. You don't have to be shredded. You don't have to look amazing, but just do a little better for yourself. Ugh. All right, I'm going to the gym. I'll see you guys in the next one.